your eminences, most reverend archbishops and bishops, dostojna pani nadzwyczajny i pełnoważny posoł Ukrainy w Spółczynnych Stratach Ameryki, distinguished representatives of the Ukrainian community, most honored guests, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Дорогі хресті, брати і сестри, тут присутні і ті, що єднаються разом з нами в молитві при помочі цієї живої трансляції. Слава Ісусу Христу! Glory be to Jesus Christ! Я переживаю цей момент як момент великого чуда. I live this, this very moment being with you today as an authentic miracle. Два роки тому назад нас уже мало не бути, але ми є. Україна є. І Україна буде. Two years ago, we supposed to not exist anymore. I remember the city of Kyiv two years ago, surrounded by the Russians, this very special spirit of the almost empty city. But we are alive. We do exist, and Ukraine will prevail. Today, according to the liturgical cycle of the Gregorian Paschal calendar, the Church of Christ centers our spiritual focus on the glorious and life-giving cross of our Lord. We call this Christopoklinna Nedila. According to our spiritual tradition, we are called to discover the mystery of the cross of our Lord from a new and for some an entirely unexpected perspective. We understand the great fast as a period of a spiritual pilg pilgrimage to the resurrection. Pist це є духовна мандрівка до Воскресіння. The path goes through the desert. A desert full of invisible spiritual struggles. In this kind of struggle, those who truly fast know it. At the midpoint of this journey, we feel tiredness, often even exhaustion and thirst. Ми часто чуємося змученими. Вичерпаними, випаленими, коли справді боремося зі злом. Чи то в нашому особистому духовному житті, чи навіть тепер під час цього моменту війни в Україні. Втома наростає. І це є природнім. Людина природньо змучується. But this exhaustion and thirst reminds us a 40 years journey of Israel in the desert, in the Old Testament. And so, when despair and fatigue, exhaustion and thirst come, the church lead us to the shadow of the life-giving tree. As a wise Caravan guide in the desert knows a place where you can rest. Restored, restore your energies and resources. Where is a space and time for rest and capability to find a source of water? in the middle of the deadly heat. This oasis for a Christian is a life-given tree 
from which the living water of the Holy Spirit flows. It flows from the open and pure sight of the crucified Savior. This place of spiritual renewal, replenishment of strength for the Father's struggle is the true and life-giving cross of the Lord. The crucified Savior, whom we worship today, is the source of our renewal and healing. Pointing to him today, the prophet Isaiah tells us, he was wounded for our sins, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that saves us was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Worshiping the Crucified One, we sometimes experience a spiritual shock. We suddenly realize that someone took away our pains and sufferings, our torments and disappointments, and transferred them from the, the purely horizontal human dimension to a vertical dimension. The Savior took them upon himself, gave them a new, eternal meaning, took them to the heights of God, the height of the Lord's cross. Багато людей в Україні мені говорили, не так болить сама рана, як болить коли я не розумію її змісту, чому то мені стається. Тому так Україна сьогодні потребує віднити сенси, зміст моєї особистої боротьби, мого плачу, мого страждання. І саме чесний і животворящий хрест Господній дає нам ці сенси, які роблять нас незламним, і непереможним, хоча і розп'ятим сьогодні народом. From now on, for each of us, the cross of the Lord becomes our spiritual, personal key to the understanding of meaning of our own suffering, pain, wounds, and exhaustion. From now on, the cross heals and does not oppress anymore. It protects and does not frighten. It is no longer an instrument that causes death, but is a tree that revives. That is why our tradition calls it the glorious and life-giving cross. Ми поклоняємося чесному і животворящому Христу Господньому. The cross turns into a true tree of life, which is the secret of the Christian resilience and a symbol of our faith in resurrection. That is why the book of Revelation gives us a description of the very special role of this tree of life even in the heavenly Jerusalem. In the middle of the street, we read in that, in that book, the, there is a tree of life which bears 12 fruits, gives its fruits every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Last week, remembering the February 24th, the sad anniversary of the beginning of the full-scale invasion in Ukraine, we experienced a unique event. Near Kyiv is the ancient princely city of Vizhorod, the city of Princess Olha and the martyrs Boris and Hlyb, the city of the venerable icon of the Virgin of Vizhorod, 
When war began, the outskirts of that, this city became the line where the Russian troops approaching Kyiv from the north were stopped. It was there, next to the dam of the Kyiv reservoir, at the crowded intersection, there were the invisible border, invisible line between the zone of occupation and death and the zone of life and freedom was. In that place, in that city of Vezhorod, we open a unique memorial dedicated to thousands of fallen defenders of Ukraine called Cross of Heroes, Hrest Heroiv. The impetus of its construction was a spiritual longings of one of the soldiers who defended Vizhorod, who had the capability to, to see this invisible line in the northern part of Vizhorod. He often came to our church, stood in prayer for a long time in front of the Lord's cross. And then one day he, he told me, the cross is the only place where I can bring my pain. When I go to visit the graves of my comrades in arms and see their wives and children crying, my pain increases. But here, in the foot of the cross, I can bring it. I can leave it and return with a new energy to fight. <laughs> Incredible with it. And then we decided together, let's do it. Let's establish a powerful healing cross of the Lord for everyone. And so this memorial was not hidden inside the church, but placed in the middle of the street, as we can read in the book of Revelation. And today, we, the bishops of the permanent synod who have come to you, want to testify here in Washington that in our Ukrainian land, this tree of life bears its fruit every day. And worshiping and touching it, kiss it, in fact serves as a genuine leaves of the heavenly tree of life that heal the wounds of Ukraine. Справді, коли ми відкривали цей хрест, ми відчули, що це є місце простір зцілення, де люди можуть лишити свій біль, свій тягар. Цікаво, що цей Меморіал так збудований, що можна увійти в середину того Христа, не стояти зовні і дивитися. А цей хрест середини сяє зорями, які символізують душі наших загиблих героїв. Хрест, який як животворяще, цілюще древо Господнє стіляє rane Ukraine. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is truly a great grace of God's providence, a small miracle that we can be here today with you, praying together for our church and our people here in National Shrine of the Holy Family in Washington. With this divine liturgy, we commence the meeting of the regular session of the permanent synod of our bishops. But to be a synod, to act as a synod, means first of all to pray together, to be together with our triune God. 
Я пригадую, як ми разом з синодом відвідували святіжого отця Франциска, і він нам казав, це є замало мати синод. Треба бути синодом. А щоб вміти сьогодні бути разом, треба найперше бути разом з Богом. З Богом, який є єдиний, але не самотній. Тому що Він є трійцею. І коли ми хочемо бути справді собою, і хочемо бути справді разом, ми мусимо вміти разом молитися. I would like to take this special, special moment as a privilege to express our gratitude to our brethren, the Catholic bishops of the United States. We are most honored for the presence of the most eminent cardinals, but also in a very special way. I like to convey and say our deep gratitude to His Excellency Timothy Broglio, the, the President of the Bishops of the U.S. As newly elected President, his first visit was to Ukraine. And today is my pleasure, honor, honor and duty to repay that visit to you, Your Excellency. You as a military ordinary, you are a bishop for the U.S. Army. Gave us a special witnessing of the solidarity and closeness of the Catholics of U.S. to suffering people of Ukraine. Thank you very much. Really, we were able in those two years win a special battle. No one in Ukraine died because of hunger, thirst, or other humanitarian causes. Russians wanted to bring us to death by starvation, as it was in the times of Holodomor. They wanted to freeze us during the winter time, but they were incapable to do that because worldwide solidarity saves the life of the people. Thank you very much, our dear brethren bishops in the U.S. I also want to share this unique opportunity to thank you, dear Ukrainian community in the United States of America, for everything you do for our beloved Ukraine. Я знаю, як розривається ваше серце, коли ви дивитеся кожного дня про нові і нові російські злочини, які відбуваються в Україні. Буквально цієї ночі ми всі молимося і переживаємо за нашу зранену Одесу, де ще по сьогоднішню хвилину з-під розвалів знищеного будинку витягають тіла жінок і маленьких дітей. І число жертв росте кожної хвилини. Від імені тих, хто сьогодні є найслабший, найвразливіший в Україні, і кому наша церква могла послужити уже ось два роки завдяки вашій жертовності і щедрості, дозвольте висловити Сердечні слова вдячності. І тут хочу подякувати особисто владиці Борисові і всім нашим українським владикам в Сполучених Штатах Америки, які справді не лише створили окремий митрополитчий фонд допомоги Україні, але особисто відвідували і відвідують нас. І роблять все для того, щоб ми могли не просто перетривати той тяжкий період, але гідно послужити Господу Богу і українському народові, як це вчив нас наш великий попередник, слуга Божий Любомир. 
We would like to have this opportunity to share our wounds and suffering with you, but at the same time to share our strength, our dreams, and our gifts. I am grateful to all of you for your tireless prayer and work for the good of Ukraine and our victory over the Russian invaders. We will win if we are and will be together. Together with God, together with one another, regardless where we live, and together with Ukraine. Slava Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory to God.